So good morning guys. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you how you can create something with an Arduino. It's going to make your work perhaps more productive. But what I did is I created a little box, a nice enclosure, two buttons, two rotary encoders. And what they do for me is that I design quite a lot in Photoshop, Illustrator, etc. Let alone this thumbnail of this video made in Photoshop. And I've used this box. What it does is increase the font size, decrease the font size, zoom in, zoom out, increase brush size and decrease brush size. Depends which size you dial this to. Now, perhaps you don't design. You can use your own keyboard shortcuts for the programs you do use. Do you use AutoCAD a lot and are there some shortcuts that you would like to have implemented? Just configure the button or the dial for the program you'd like with the combination you like. Perhaps you could even use this for, I don't know, watching movies at home, turn volume up, volume down. Next pause, next song, creature or media box. It's all the same principle in a tiny, small, little package. Now you can expand to this to have 30 buttons if you'd like. Perhaps there's something I will show you in the future that I've gone overboard as I've always done. But if you want to see how this is made, Keep watching. If you like it, leave a like. And if you want to keep updated, subscribe. And let's get right into it. So usually we've been making flight sim controllers, but sometimes you want to make something else or you want something that can make your life easier in a different way. So that's why I've created this project. Uh, now it's important to note that if we first take a look at what can happen if we do something wrong, because we're going to be using a keyboard library. Now, the keyboard library isn't all too complex, but let's say for an instance you mixed up the rotary encoder pin A with rotary encoder pin B or something or something else where a button state keeps getting recognized. So let's say the button is getting pushed constantly and we would have it hooked up with a keyboard command. That would mean that it keeps sending a keyboard command. Now, perhaps that's innocent, I don't know. Uh, it's a slash, so it keeps typing a slash. But if you want to, to upload new code, it can become quite annoying when it keeps sending slashes and then you try to upload a blank sketch. So let's first take a look how we can handle that, all right? It zoomed in to font size 100,478. So then you just have to take out the Arduino USB. So we remove the cable, right? It's disconnected. And usually an Arduino has either a reset pin on the board. In this case, it's this uh, livered color, I think, yeah. Or it has a reset pin. Now in this case, it's called reset. And if you connect this one with ground, it's gonna reset as well. Now, why is it important? If you make made a fault in your code and it keeps sending keyboard commands, it could become <laughs> quite hard to re-upload a new sketch. If that would be the case, we do file, new sketch, gonna make an empty sketch, we hit upload, and then it's gonna say there is no device connected, right? or it's uploading. And the moment it says uploading, we reconnect. Now, it's important to note that sometimes it doesn't work on the first try. And you have to tr keep trying to get the timing right. And you make sure that you take a sketch that perhaps is even saved. So that's something to keep in mind that if something goes wrong, you know how to fix it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, leave a like. And if you want to keep updated, subscribe. And let's learn something today. Okay, so let's take a look on what we can do with the device I've just shown you. Because if we take a look at the design itself, it's quite slim. So that makes it easy to lay next to your keyboard. Fits in your hand palm even. It features two rotary encoders and two buttons. And the rotary encoders have a button as well. Now, why can the Arduino be something you can use in the office? Well, in my case, let's say for this 
a previous video, I had to create a thumbnail, for instance. What I used to do is to always remember the keyboard shortcuts and it, it's something you can still do. But I think that just having something in the palm of your hand that you can use to manipulate your screen, like I can zoom in, I can start drawing something, say, oh, that's a small line, right? So I'm like, okay, I want a, I want a big line like this. And the, you know what? I want to use black, so I'm going to zoom out, move it over. Here we go. So let's make a pair of eyes on top of this or something. Yep, yep. Here we go, some creepy standalone eyes on top of my thumbnail. You see, it's a bit... I still need to work on the debouncing, because I haven't implemented this in this code yet. I can... I, let's pick this font. I can press the rotary encoder and just change things on the fly. And this is actually quite powerful, makes my life a lot easier. I can send it to the back. If I'd like, if I select a layer, here we go. See, text is gone back so I can move layers around and this is specifically Photoshop right I could use this in Illustrator as well it works fine perhaps if I think, configure it for Premiere Pro to make my videos I could use this example as well for different things I could even if I open a browser let's see google.com here we go so we just use the buttons to zoom in and out. So it's a bit more of a use case that perhaps you encounter. Even in the IDE, I could do something like, see, I could increase and decrease font size. I'm not quite sure what this is going to do. Nothing. This is going to do, oh, this is going to comment the line, uncomment the line. See, so there's all kinds of use cases where you can take a simple device that just uses four buttons and two rotary encoders. To actually increase productivity in your own work and it's just so cool to have laying around and to play with instead of having to remember all the keyboard shortcuts so let's just take a look on how we can create this ourselves well, i wanted to show you the inside of this device um, the lid was made so it could just fit on there but i accidentally glued it to the bottom part so it's really tight and shut but it all comes down to just wiring up two rotary encoders and two buttons. I will put the schematics down in the comments as well, or the description. And a Pro Micro. I have a Pro Micro set up because it's the easiest to work with if you're looking to make a keyboard. And it will hook up itself with just a micro USB. So it's pretty straightforward. The design is simple. And it looks flashy. Right, you can create this your own color if you'd like. Create a wooden box, I don't know. I would create some little bit more depth. Okay, let's dive into the code to see how we can create this ourselves. The first thing we need is to let's not use caps lock, let's include keyboard.h. This is the library that's going to just give us all the functionality we need for our keyboards inputs so that is what we're going to be using to send commands because most programs use keyboard shortcuts to do certain things i believe autodesk fusion has those as well so perhaps if you use that program a lot just check for yourself what kind of keyboard shortcuts you would like to use and now we're going to declare all the pins so we're going to say encoder zero pin a In my case is connected to nine and encoder 0 pin B, in my case connected to 8. We have to encode a switch. Let's also say 0. And my case connected to 5. We have to encode 0 pin A last, so the last position of the A pin our first encoder is by default low and our new position because we're just going to call it n is low as well now we can just copy and paste this just going to replace all the zeros at once and add a one to the n 
and change the ports to our second encoder. In my case, it's seven, six, four. Yeah, correct. Okay, now we have our buttons. I'm gonna call it button A is 10, because in my case it's connected to 10, and button B is 16. Now, the button is going to work with an input pull-up mode. This means is that we're going to connect this one to ground and the other side to either one of our digital pins on the board. The moment we press the button, a connection is made between the left pin and the right pin. If you release it, the connection is lost. Pretty straightforward, right? Same goes for the switches on the rotary encoders. And the way the rotary encoders work is you have a point A and a point B, well, perhaps something like this, with an offset. And if you rotate one side, it will know, I will grab this one so I don't zoom in. If I rotate one side, it will hit A first. And if you rotate to the other side, it will hit B first. And that's the way we know which side is rotating and the amount of times it's gonna hit that sensor. It's gonna know, okay, how oops how fast you're rotating so that's how the basic how the rotary encoder works in the buttons so we're going to also declare those in the setup block i'm going to say pin mode encoder zero pin a is an input pin mode let's just copy now let's do one more line encoder zero pin B, input, and now let's copy this, and you might have guessed, change the 0 for 1, I would say pin mode, because we have all the four buttons, right, so we do encoder 0 switch, which is going to be an input pull up, same for encoder 1. I'm just going to copy and paste because Ralph's here. I'm going to be looking at me typing this. And we have pin mode button A is also an input pull up. And we have the pin mode button B, which is also an input pull up, right? Okay, here we go. And now we have all the buttons defined. We have button one, button two, button three, button four, or at least encoder zero switch, encoder one switch, button A, button B, a rotary encoder, and rotary encoder. That's all we need, right? So now we just need to start the keyboard dot begin. Because this is going to tell a library, okay, you need to initiate the keyboard functionalities in our code. And that's all we need in the setup block. We don't need a serial. It, you could use it for debugging purposes, but it's not a necessity. Now, let's just first tackle the rotary encoders, because those are the biggest codes. I'm going to say the new value is digital read encoder zero pin A. So the new value is going to read from the digital pin if it's low or high. And now if, so if something is true, and what is what is the if in this case? If encoder zero pin last is equal to low, and n is equal to high. Now, why do we do it like this? Oh, let's add this into brackets. Because this will trigger only when a full rotation is made. Because if it's low right now, it's going to make a full rotation. So it's going to hit the high. So this one is by default at low, right? If that's the case, so not halfway through, only if that's the case, do something. And you'll see what will happen in a moment. So if digital read 
encoder zero then b sorry it's equal to low so this is going to really make sure that we have the full rotation because then we know that one is high and one is low and there's nothing in between we're going to do something in our case i want my first encoder to zoom in we don't have the function yet i'm going to come back to that in a moment and if it isn't that case then it means it's rotating the other way around we're going to say zoom is two so we're going to check if the full rotation is made and then we check if it's going one way or it's going the other way now it's important because like i mentioned it's going to compare the last state to the current state that we also redefine the last state because if we said it's true we need to tell the system okay but now i want you to take a look from the new point on forward so we're going to do encoder zero pin a last is new this step so the n this will override the current n which is by default at low so perhaps now it's high and it will from there on out in the new loop check from the new position if that isn't the case you would keep keep on looking from the same point and it will just get stuck if you're if you're in a bad luck so we always need to redefine the new value to look from well to have a second rotary encoder we could just copy and paste so we now do n1 encoder 1 encoder 1 pin last n1 encoder 1 pin b and 1 is n1 so it's important to check all the ends and to change all the encoders now we don't want it to zoom as well let's see i believe i have my brush size on there right here brush size here we go so i'm gonna make sure that you're outside this if statement or else I'm gonna get some weird behavior and the only thing that's left are two buttons and those are the most easy to do so if digital read button a is equal to low and if digital read button b is also equal to low so now we've defined if the button is pressed so if the signal is low do something see in my case if it's low it does like that now what do we want to do in my case i want to move it a layer layer move or something in this case i want two and in the other case i want one now it's always important to add a little delay if you use buttons and that's because or else you're gonna press the button and it will keep registering so it will keep firing the command if it doesn't get frozen for a second to register the command before you release it right that's why we add a little delay in there oh i think I've, I still I stink. I think I forgot to add another button, two buttons. If encoder zero on a digital read, digital read, encoder zero switch is equal to low. And we do the same for the other one. So if, let's just copy and paste. Encoder one switch is low. And I believe I had font size, yeah, font size two and font size one. And of course, a little delay. So we don't want the delay when the rotary encoder gets turned because that is going to make ensure that we don't skip certain steps. We only want the delay if we press the button. And if we have to handle certain keyboard commands, but I'll get back to it in a second. So we have one, two, three, four functions, right? We have zoom, brush size, font size, and layer move. 
Now for each, we're going to create a function and we don't want it to return anything. We want to do the action in the function itself. So let's say zoom and uh, direction. Let's not call it uh, look. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's always the hardest part, right? Coming up with original names. <laughs> Void, zoom, uh, there, from direction. I don't know. It could also be interpreted as directory normally, like the, the folder on your computer, but we're going to use it as, as direction right now. We're going to create a switch. And what we're going to do with the switch, we're going to handle the direction. Now, if the case is one, do something. And if the case is two, do something else. So we're going to pass the int, in our case one or two, into a switch. If the int is one, do this. If the int is two, we're going to do this part. Now, if it's one, we want to... Um, let's see what the key, what command is. I have it written down somewhere. Up or down is it down? Zoom. Okay. We do keyboard dot press. And now comes something you can find in the docs of the um, how do you call it? The the keyboard library. So we do key left control. I will put the link to the docs in the comments as well. Let me see if I can pull it up on the screen so you also get a good idea of what's in there. Let's see, these are the documentations. I just Googled them, uh, keyboard, keyboard modifiers, key left control, key left shift, key left alt. And I'm gonna show you how you can do letters and numbers as well. So if you get lost, I will link this one down below so you can get the ones you need. Of course, perhaps you don't even need the ones that we are going to be using, but just so you know where you can find them. So we do the left control for the zoom. In our case, I'm going to use it for Photoshop, so I know that it's keyboard.press the dash. Now it's going to press both buttons simultaneously. And we want it to be pressed for a little while, you know, to actually register the change. So 15 milliseconds. So you want to keep it as small as possible because it's going to delay the interrupts on the potentiometer, uh, rotary encoder, sorry. And after that, we do just keyboard.release all. So it's going to be a short press. It isn't going to hold, it's going to short press, right? You could also do a hold and release. It's totally up to you how you would like to implement it and then add a break. Now we just copy this because we're going to be lazy. It's not lazy, it's, it's good practice. And change the minus with an equal sign. So now if we fire up this code and we change the rotary encoder, it's going to either press left control and the dash or either the left control and the equal sign. Now we can create just a same, whoop, I don't know what I did here. There we go. Create the same function, kind of, not, it's not exactly the same or else we don't have to repeat it, for the other four classes. Other four, right? We have Zoom, we have Font, we have, let's see, Font Size, sorry. Font Size. We have Layer Move. Layer move. And we're still missing the brush size. Okay. So this one, brush size. So I just copied the same function four times. And now we're going to change the parameters as needed. Because the first one was left control dash. For the font size, we need to have other key commands. It's the same functionality, a bit, but only different, different inputs. So in the case of the font size, it's left control as well. In my case, I want to copy this, paste it. Well, you know what? Add, make Instead of control, we're going to add the shift, because that's the key command with together with this one. 
oh, this one. And now we copy just these commands over here. And we're going to change that one with the greater than sign. So that's all we need for the font size already. Just rip out the other ones, get lost. There you go. Let's get that square and fair out. Brush size is the same, it's just a key combination. So we're gonna just take a look at the brush size. I believe it's even simpler because we can use the single parentheses and say the bracket to the left, right? It's going to the right, yeah. Get away with the dash. And we can do the same over here, but then the other way around. So pointing to the left. And I would say, you might see that if we had those special keys like control, we did it key underscore left underscore control. In this case, we're just gonna do single quotes for a character or a letter. So you could also do keyboard dot press A. And that's gonna send the A or press the A. It's also possible to write a sentence with this library and you would do keyboard keyboard dot write and then a and you could even do keyboard dot write b and it would just make a sentence out of letters i believe you can even pass in strings let me just check for you in the documentation that's the beauty of those things Let's see. Oh, no. Let me get it back. Keyboard. Here we go. Keyboard dot print. Uh, right. Yeah, all right. Let's see. Same thing as a quoted character. Keystrokes. It's a single keystroke. So it's important to note as well. So that's how you can find actually the documentation for the library itself. And if you ever get stuck, check for yourself how you can use library to its fullest, right? So we get rid of this A, we don't need this. And for the layer move, we're gonna say keyboard press key left control, that's the same. I'm gonna change this with a side dash, and I'm gonna change this with this one. So just to finish things up, we have our font size, brush size, layer move, and zoom function implemented. And what we already did in the loop function is we called these functions from the action we desire. So if the button is pressed, do layer move up, do layer move down, font size to, font size, etc., brush size, zoom. And this is all we need to create our own little productivity box. Let's see if I can. And we can actually see this working already because if I upload this code, that's okay. Don't forget to save, always save. Now I see I forgot to do encoder zero pin last. Zero pin A last. Oh, it's, let's just move it here because I think I got zero pin everywhere, right? No. Okay, it's good to always double check. Zero pin B capital and it's encoder. See, we all make mistakes. Encoder, zero pin B. And that's the beauty of the, it's just gonna tell you because I'm, here we go. Encoder pin A last, because here, apparently I was consistent. Encoder pin B. In this case, I also made a typo as well. So I'm consistent in making mistakes. Encoder pin A last. Encoder one pin last. Yeah. And it's a miracle, but that was it. So here we go. And now if you go upload it, we should have the same behavior as before. Zoom. Zoom in, zoom out. Um, this was the brush size, right? Yeah. There we go. Smaller, bigger. It's all working perfectly fine. Let's add some here. Here we go. Oops, smiley face. 
see that the smiley face is coming behind it. So now we can test, okay, I want to have the smiley in front. Oh, I think I'm moving it backwards. Here we go. Now the smiley is on top, because that's what this shortcut does. See, it moves it in between the layers. And we still have the font size. Whoa. Well, it's fine. And we can increase and decrease the font size. And this is always we wanted. So we just, I looked for the shortcuts I use the most. If you want to have something with yourself, I believe there's a shortcut menu, Control Shift, Alt, K. If I don't have anything selected. And in this application, it will show you all the shortcuts that are available. I'm going to see if I open Word. Or perhaps even Excel. That's perhaps even a better example. So let's say new folder. Let's say you use sum a lot, right? That's, that's a possibility. It's a function in Excel that gets used quite a lot. Sum, um, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Let's see. Um, bup, 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 bup. Equals. I've got it set up in Dutch, so that's a bit of a bummer. So let's say this is just you, you guys say sum, I say sum. I do control C, go to my sketch. Keyboard dot print. That's how we can print a string. And now we can say keyboard dot print double quotes equals sum. I'm gonna remove this press. I got it set up to the zoom button. That's not ideal, so I'm gonna take this to my board, to my clipboard. And put it on a button because it's more obvious to have this on a button, right? Um, brush size Neva, font size. Let's let's change the font size to the sum function, and then we can release the release all the delay. Because it's just going to print out this line. I'm going to re-upload the code. Now we just have to check. Go to one pin. A last. Strange, I just had the same code and it was working. I think I, I did Ctrl -Z, Z, so that's obvious. Now if you go to Excel, press Enter, okay, and press one of the buttons. Here we go, it's this one. So, let's go back over it again. If I press, we get the sum. It's gonna, yeah, I thought so. So let's do this. Let's say this sum a1 plus b1 close it. Now this is just a simple example because if I would now I would do it like this one two and this will be three right but you, you get the drift that you can just program anything you need on this device. Now you could expand it expand it this is just a very simple implementation I think it's more of a proof of concept. But that's a way you can use it in your own office. You could even, <laughs> if you came here from the flight sim group of people, you could make a trigger or something that would switch this between work mode. So if your boss walks in, you can alter your Excel with it, zoom in, zoom out. Uh, you can actually delete stuff with it, apparently. Add stuff. Does this do something? No, I don't know, but you can just switch, make a toggle switch that if you're not working, you can use this as as your radio or something. Turn on autopilot, turn off autopilot, which is a more discreet device that you can have with you anytime without having to dish out something like, uh, I don't know, you know, uh, this. Bit of a mess, let's cover this up. So that's something to just, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So if you liked it, please leave a like. And if you want to keep updated, subscribe. I'm going to be back working on my flight sim controllers in a coming video. And I hope to see you in the next one.